which tennis grip should I use, which grip is going to be best for the forehand, and all the other strokes. You guys have questions and I have the answers and it's all coming up right now. Selecting the right tennis grip is very important to your tennis game. The grip that you choose to go with is going to determine the racket angle as your racket approaches the ball. Some grips have strengths and weaknesses and depending on your style of play and what you want to do on the tennis court and the balls that you're receiving could all play a factor in determining the best grip for you. Here are some quick tips on how to hold the tennis racket. First, you want to make sure that when you're holding the racket, you slide your hand all the way down to the base of the grip to where your pinky is barely holding on to the racket. Your racket butt is going to sit in the palm of your hand. At first, this may feel a little bit uncomfortable, but over time, your hand will develop a callus and through repetition, you won't know that you held it any different. One of the reasons for holding the racket lower at the base is that as you develop as a player, you're going to want to have more racket head speed. And by having your racket down at the base, you're going to be able to generate a little bit more racket head speed and keep your hand a little bit looser to get a little bit more pop on your shots as well as on your serve. You may notice that on tour or on TV, a lot of the players have their hands spread out across the grip. They have this little trigger finger here. And the reason why their hand is spread out across the grip is so then the player can really feel each shot and get a sense of feeling the ball on their strings as they're making contact and have a little bit more touch. This goes for volleys, forehands, backhands, serves, you name it. Now let's jump into how to find the grips. The first grip that we want to cover is a continental grip, arguably the most important grip. And the reason being is because we utilize the continental on the serves, the volleys, slices, uh, two-handed backhands, oftentimes. The only time that you're not going to use the continental grip is on a one-handed backhand or on a forehand. So here's how you find the continental grip. You want to put your index knuckle and your heel pad on bevel number two of your racket. So as you can see, the racket butt has different bevels. One, two, three, all the way to eight. The butt is an octagon. So these flat ridges here, this top one is bevel number one, and then to the right is bevel number two. That's where you're gonna put your index knuckle, the padding, and the heel pad on the grip. So when you have a continental grip, it's gonna look like this. The continental grip is very unique in the sense that it is very versatile. You can pick up low balls because you can open up the racket face with a continental grip. On your serve, you can hit slices, flat, and kick because you can manipulate the way that the racket face is um, approaching the ball. As a coach, I get a lot of pushback from students who don't want to change their grip when they've been volleying with an Eastern forehand grip, kind of like this for years. And for me as a coach, there really is no wiggle room on volleying with anything other than a continental. Now, when you have a continental grip, you can have a little bit of wiggle room on bevel number two, but your index knuckle has to stay on bevel number two. If it starts creeping over to bevel number three, that's more of an Eastern grip. And then that's just gonna be no good for you when you go to pick up low balls, you're gonna lose out on a lot of the benefits. So when it comes to serves, volleys, overheads, you're not gonna have any other grip than the Continental. One topic that's very debatable is what's the best grip for the forehand ground stroke. As a coach, which grip that I determined to have a student utilize is based on where they're at in their tennis game and where I think that they're gonna go. From a developmental standpoint, when working with a student, the Eastern forehand grip gives me a little bit more wiggle room 
to teach them how to take the ball on the rise since waist high balls are going to be much more comfortable with the eastern grip whereas with the semi western grip which is a little bit more aggressive it's going to be more comfortable to hit balls chest high when working with adults that aren't generating as much power and perhaps they need a little bit more muscle mass to get that ball going through the court then I generally teach an eastern forehand grip and the reason for this is because we want to maximize their power whereas utilizing a grip such as a semi-western grip is going to require a little bit more racket head speed that they may or may not be able to do. Here's how you find the eastern forehand grip. You're going to put your index knuckle padding here and your heel padding here on bevel number three. So you're going to go here one, two, three, and that bevel is this whole flat range here. Then you're going to put your index knuckle and heel pad on the grip with your hand spread out and your pinky barely holding on to the grip. With the Eastern forehand grip, it's very versatile in the sense that it's easy to flatten out the ball and it's also easy to create topspin. You're just not going to be able to hit as much topspin as you would be able to utilizing a semi-western or a western grip. The ideal strike zone for an Eastern forehand is going to be waist high. It's a little bit more difficult to handle high balls with an Eastern grip However, it's a little bit easier to transition over to a continental grip if you're an attacking player looking to come up to net. The semi-western forehand grip is the most popular grip on tour today and is utilized by players such as Andy Murray and Rafa. What makes the semi-western so popular is its ability to generate hard hit balls with topspin while still being able to handle higher balls. On the pro level, that's what the players see a lot of is high balls that are coming heavy with topspin so it makes sense that they choose a grip that's going to be able to create that type of ball but also handle the oncoming ball that's higher as well for the semi-western forehand grip the ideal contact is going to be up here by the chest and you're going to be able to generate more topspin than you would be able to with an eastern forehand grip the swing path is going to be more low to high naturally than an eastern forehand grip. You can still flatten out the ball, but it's not going to be as easy to flatten out as it would be if you were utilizing an eastern forehand. Some disadvantages of the semi-western grip is that low balls are a little bit harder to pick up. And if you go to transition your grip to a continental, it's a little bit more extreme. Here's how you find the semi-western grip. You're going to put your index knuckle padding and your heel pad on bevel number four. So you take your racket, remember it's an octagon, one, two, three, four, and then you're going to, this bevel right here runs all the way up. You're going to put your index knuckle there and your heel pad, and you're going to make sure that your hand is all the way down to where your pinky's barely holding on to the racket. Quick pro tip on finding the semi-western grip is that if you set the racket down on the ground flat and then you just go to pick it up, in my experience with my students, this helps their hand find bevel number four where their index knuckle is resting on the grip appropriately. However, you may need to still check to make sure that your index knuckle is on that bevel and over time, You'll be able to feel it and know when your grip is on the right bevel and when it's not. It just takes time to get that feeling of the grip. There is another grip for the forehand called the Western grip. This video is about which grip is best for the forehand or any other stroke. 
In my opinion, the Western grip is not the best and you'd be much better off selecting a semi-Western or Eastern grip based on the way that you play. So, this is coming from a guy that plays on hard courts all the time, doesn't play much on clay, and all my students at my club are playing tennis on hard courts. So just take that into account. It's not uncommon to see younger players have a Western grip, and here's why. Oftentimes happens is that a junior starts playing tennis with regular balls. And since they're a lot shorter and they're underdeveloped, they're getting balls that are bouncing as standard balls are, but they are not as tall as adults. So they're having to hit high balls, shoulder high or above, all the time. And due to this, their hand naturally moves over more towards a Western grip to accommodate the high balls and make it easier to return those high balls. So if you are a junior player or you are going to be training junior players or your kids, make sure that you utilize the proper ball for their age group. When it comes to the one-handed backhand, there's a couple different options that you can utilize for grips. Those are the Eastern backhand grip and the semi-Western backhand grip. First, let's cover the Eastern. The Eastern grip is gonna be where you put your index knuckle and your heel pad on bevel number one. So you take your racket and that top bevel is gonna be bevel number one, here. You're gonna put your index knuckle and your heel pad on that bevel and then that will be a true Eastern backhand grip. Some players like to have their hands spread out like this and have their index knuckle and heel pad on bevel number one. However, it's far more common to be making more of a fist like this, having your index knuckle on bevel number one. With this grip, you can hit the ball flat or you can drive up the ball for topspin as well. It's a very popular grip for one-handed players. In my coaching experience, this is my go-to grip when teaching people how to hit the one-handed backhand. When I come across a student that has a little bit more tennis experience and they can just unload into the ball and create a tremendous amount of power because they're very strong physically, then I also look into doing a semi-Western grip on their backhand, which is the same grip that's utilized by Stan Wawrinka. To find the semi-Western backhand grip, you're gonna put your index knuckle padding and heel pad on bevel number eight. So for a righty, you start off on bevel number one, go one to the left, and this whole range here, put your index knuckle and heel pad on the racket. The semi-Western backhand grip can give you a tremendous amount of topspin, and it's utilized by players that are very developed physically with their upper body. So you're gonna, your swing path is gonna be more naturally low to high, so you're gonna need to get under the ball and go up more so than when you go to hit an Eastern backhand grip. It's also gonna be a little bit harder to flatten out the ball than if you were hitting with a one-handed backhand with an Eastern grip. The semi-Western backhand grip is also helpful for hitting balls at a little bit of a higher contact point. So that's why you see some of the players on tour utilizing this grip. However, it's not as common at the recreational level. For two-handed backhands, there's a few different grip options that you can utilize. The dominant hand primarily is gonna be in a continental grip with your right hand, and we went over that where you have your index knuckle and heel pad on bevel number two. You're still gonna have your hand hanging off the grip a little bit with your pinky fully on the grip though. Your non-dominant hand is gonna go up on the grip. It can be touching the other hand or there can be a little bit of a space, but you definitely don't want your left hand overlapping in any way onto your dominant hand. When it comes to the two-handed backhand, you have a couple different options for how you hold your grips. For your dominant hand, it's gonna be in a continental grip. Remember, your hand is slid down to the bottom of the grip where your pinky is barely holding on, bevel number two with your right hand in that continental. 
When it comes to your non-dominant hand on the two-handed backhand, you want to make sure that when you go to place it, it can touch your dominant hand like this, or there can be space between your non-dominant hand and your, your left hand if you're a righty. However, you don't want to have overlap on your two-handed grip. The ideal grip that you can utilize on your two-handed backhand is going to be between an eastern backhand grip and an semi-western backhand grip. So that would be on the ridge between bevel number six and bevel number seven. So you go here and you, let's just go to the left if you're a righty. So you have bevel number one here and then eight and then seven and then six. You put your index knuckle and your heel pad on that ridge between seven and six. So essentially, you're in between an eastern grip and a semi-western grip with your left hand, and this is how it looks. Once you have that hand, you go ahead and slide the right hand on there too, and now you have your ideal backhand grip. This is the grip that Novak Djokovic uses. It's the grip of choice for all my students and myself. You do have some wiggle room. You could have your left hand on an Eastern grip, which would be bevel number seven with your heel pad and index knuckle, or it could go all the way to semi-Western. Anywhere in that range will work. Your two-handed backhand grip is very versatile. Your strike zone is anywhere between your thigh all the way up to your chest and you can go ahead and you can flatten out the ball easily or you can drop the racket head and generate a tremendous amount of topspin with this grip as well. Quick recap, what are the best grips for you as a tennis player? The continental grip is gonna be the best grip for you when you're serving, hitting overheads, hitting volleys. If you have a two-handed backhand, dominant hand will be in a continental grip as well or if you're slicing, a continental grip works great. The best grip for a forehand is going to be an Eastern grip if you're working on taking the ball early and you're developing your game, or if you're not able to generate enough power and you want to get more power on your shots and feel like you're receiving waist high balls, go with an Eastern grip. If you're playing tennis and you want to hit more top spin and you're already generating enough racket head speed, then a semi-western grip is a great grip for you. It is the primary choice on the Pro Tour, and that's because they are receiving higher balls that are jumping up around their chest or shoulder level, and the semi-western grip is a great option to handle that type of ball, as well as produce that type of ball. For me personally, I like to start off my students with an eastern grip to learn the fundamentals of taking the ball on the rise, make it easier for them to hit the ball waist high. And then as they develop further, then we go over to a semi-Western grip if they have the racket head speed and strength to produce a powerful enough ball to where we need an increased amount of topspin. As a player myself, I hit with a semi-Western grip. I find it critical for me because the guys I have trouble with hit very heavy balls that come deep and I wanna combat them so that's my grip of choice. When you're hitting a one-handed backhand, the best grip that I would recommend is the Eastern backhand grip because it gives you plenty of options to flatten out the ball or create topspin. It's very intuitive. It makes sense when you go to hit the ball, the racket is already squared up to meet it. You don't need to do a whole lot of manipulating or a lot of reps to figure out how to make solid contact with the ball. If you generate a ton of power, you're physically very strong, and you want more topspin on your shot, then you can go to that semi-Western one-handed backhand grip. The ideal grip for that two-handed backhand is dominant hand in a continental, non-dominant hand in between the semi-Western and Eastern grip, in between bevel number six and seven on that ridge, that's gonna be the best choice for you. I hope that I answered the question, what grip should I use on all my tennis strokes? And if you feel like there's some strengths and weaknesses that I missed on these grips, or feel like that there's other grips I should have mentioned, 
please leave it in the comments below. I will respond to every comment. And if you like the video, give me a like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks so much.